everybody, it's Dragon Age 1000 here, Fuerza GT. Welcome to another episode of my Brilliant Diamond Duplock Nuzlocke. I know it doesn't really feel like I'm doing much of a Nuzlocke, to be honest, because I haven't had any Pokemon die. But that's because I'm basically taking safety precautions of not risking using Pokemon of low HP, knowing the fact that they're basically going to die at any point. Because I'm basically growing a little bit of a connection to my team. I don't want anyone to die. I really don't. But anyway, we are challenging the Eternal City Gym this episode. I went out to heal my Pokemon and leaving the gym and then coming back after beating the first trainer, you don't have to battle them again just to get the hint. So, down here, oh my god. 2D space, navigating in 3D. Say this every time, it's a terrible idea. Okay, another aroma lady using a bidet. One poison fang should do it. Or not. Oh, come on! Seriously, not the paralysis again. Why do you have to keep giving me a status condition? Absolutely stupid. It really is. Oh my god. Not only is this do that no. What? Oh my god, Badoo has rest! How the heck does a Badoo have rest? Oh, and it's got Sleep Fork too. So you've got Stun Spore, Rest, Sleep Fork, and Absorb. Really? So you're basically hoping for Sleep Fork to, to select Absorb. But instead, it's going to keep choosing either Rest or Stun Spore. And yes, I am not joking. One time I actually used a Pokemon that knew both Sleep Fork and Rest. Very first turn after I used Rest, I used Sleep Fork and it chose Rest. I am not joking. Right, okay, let's um, give Stella some battles. I could also do it for Terrell as well, since Terrell does actually have a flying move. You've got this, Stella. You're not really a special attacker, but that's fine. That's honestly fine. And she hits with a 75% accurate stun spore again. Ugh. Moves that have at least a 5% chance to miss. We humans use it, we miss. The AI uses it, they never miss. The only time they ever do miss with the move is if we um, are using dig, using bounce, using dive, using fly, basically using whatever move will naturally avoid the attack. Right, let's swap out leaf edge for bite. Ember does have a chance for the burn, but it didn't get it, unfortunately. But then again, you don't really want to start a forest fire inside of a gym, do you? Well, 
waste of your time. Really is. So I feel like I'm going to get a high damage roll of Ember here, and it's probably going to knock your body out. Uh, when you have a 50% chance of doing something and you never get it. There we go. If you're wondering why I'm yawning a lot lately, it's because I had to wake up at half past five this morning. And um, yeah, I did get to sleep around at ten. Well, I didn't really read what the hint was, but obviously she's over there. So once again, I'm going to have to run back and heal the freaking paralysis. I know I could just use a paralyzed heal or basically a berry, but I don't think I have a, um, a cherry berry. I don't think I do. If I do, then I obviously wasn't paying attention to me picking it up. I just bloody hate paralysis with a passion. I really do. It's the one singular status condition that would actually give you a benefit if you had guts for the ability, but at the same time, with having a 50% chance of actually moving it just makes it sound like that you'd rather go for the burn or the poison, really. And just have your Pokemon holding onto the leftovers to cancel out the poison slash burn damage. Okay, so this trainer's got a Turf Wave on their team. Though I will say... Um, minus Pokemon Trainer Blue becoming the new Viridian City Gym Leader when we battled him in Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver as the remake of the original Gold Silver Crystal. Um, it was actually kind of interesting how he was known to be the only Gym Leader I believe, to have an actual starter Pokemon in his team. Even though, yes, it was actually a um, Kanto starter, but still. Uh, let's put Terrell in front. Give her some battle experience. Go for the wing attack. Why? Literally, why? Why does the AI keep getting everything that we human players never get? First turn, physical contact. Activate the poison point. This, literally, that happens to me every bloody battle. I am not sure. Yeah. God, I'm getting to the high pitch shouting again. Ugh. That literally happens to me every single battle. I am not joking. Just an ability that has a chance to activate, and it always activates when the AI has it. But it never activates when we have it. 
And the one time where it does activate is the one time where it doesn't even matter. It's like the poison point, an ability that has a chance of poisoning the opponent upon physical contact. The AI contacts us, never gets poisoned. But on the turn where they are one hit away from being killed, yes, they do get poisoned. And even more so, they get poisoned before we use our attack move to kill the Pokemon anyway. Anyway, whatever. Gardenia. Time for us to battle, yeah? Okay. Gardenia starts off with a Cherubi playing Grass Side level 19, Chlorophyll for the ability, which doubles the Pokemon speed in sunlight, which you would have to set up for. Um, in this game, she has to move Grass Knot, Growth, Dazzling Gleam, and Safeguard. But if you were playing the original Diamond and Pearl, if my freaking laptop would load already. Um, she would have Grass Knot, Leap Speed, Safeguard, and Growth. Okay. So, you obviously notice she has a Fairy-type move on her Cherubi. When I was playing this game for the very first time ever, and I used a Pokemon that was... Basically, I actually used a Merkur on my team for a little bit. It caught me off guard when I saw Cherubi use Dazzling Gleam and nearly one hit killed my Murkrow. In my very first ever playthrough of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Now you can see why I say... Nice critical hit, Zubat. Now you can see why I say that this game is actually more harder than the original Diamond and Pearl. Because basically in the original Diamond and Pearl... They follow the mechanic of how Gen 4 works. But, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl follows the mechanic of how... Um, generation 8 works. Because this is technically a Gen 8 game. Right. If you think I'm going a little bit, like, there's nothing wrong about this, like, as in the whole, there's nothing too challenging about this because I haven't lost a Pokemon. You haven't even seen a half of it. Her second Pokemon, Turtwig, level 19, playing Grass type, has its hidden ability, Shell Armor, which protects the Pokemon from critical damage and is holding a Miracle Seed. With Grass Knot, Razor Leaf, Reflect, and Work Up. In the original Diamond and Pearl, he doesn't have any of that. He actually has Overgrowth for the ability because Hidden Ability didn't debut in Generation 4, and instead has Grass Knot, Razor Leaf, Withdraw, and Reflect, and is not holding an item. So, if you think I'm going a little bit too senile about this game being harder than Diamond and Pearl, oh, you would think Diamond and Pearl is more harder than the game that allows the gym leader to use a hidden ability Pokemon. Nobody should ever use a hidden ability Pokemon, but the gym leader does. And technically speaking, you could technically get a hidden ability Pokemon yourself, but that would be if you was actually able to obtain one. Which in this game, I don't recall any way possible to get a hidden ability Pokemon. I have no idea. There might be a way, I just don't know. I just don't know. And also that move, Work Up. That move debuted in Generation 5. Not Generation 4. 
But the thing is, you are badly poisoned and you're taking HP damage a lot more frequently with that poison every turn. And... Okay. Oh, it wasn't... <laughs> I was actually going to say, high critical hit ratio, they thought, oh, I'm fine. But then they got the critical hit anyway. <laughs> God dang it. Uh, right, player save. I'm going to use a regular potion. Good, she didn't use reflect. I was worried that she was going to. Because now comes out her third Pokemon, and this one could basically turn some tables. I wish it. I really do wish there was voice acting in Pokemon, honestly. Her last Pokemon is a fully evolved Roserade. Level 22, Grass Poison type. Is another Pokemon that she has with its hidden ability of Technician. Otherwise, it would have been either Natural Cure or Poison Point. But obviously, Technician boosts the power of moves by 50% if they have a base power of 60 or less. With the moves Grass Knot, Petal Blizzard, Poison Sting, and Stun Spore. If he was in the original Diamond and Pearl, it would have natural cure for the ability holding a citrus berry with grass knot, magical leaf, poison sting, and stun spore. It wouldn't have petal blizzard. Right, I am not even going to try with supersonic because I know I'm going to miss with it. Thankfully for me, even though petal blizzard is being boosted because of its grass typing, it doesn't have a high critical hit ratio. Plus, Rose Raid is a special attacker. R literally, Rose Raid is a fast, special, sweeper. If you were able to like train this up correctly, you could have it outspeed a lot of Pokemon and do a lot of damage special attacking wise. But, because I got a Pokemon that's quad resisted to a grass type attack, and also the fact that Grass Knot basically has increased power the heavier the opponent is. And since I'm using a flying type, um, it's not going to do her any wonders. Right, I'm going to switch out to Terrell. Because Poison Fang is not really doing as much damage as I hope. I honestly do feel like that my Shiva has low attack IV. I honestly do. Okay. And there we go. Critical hit to boot. I'm going to say that was a needed crit. I'm going to say that was needed. Hey, double level up for Terrell. And of course, everybody else gets a level up apart from Petunia and Fator. Cast her with Quick Guard. Uh, tempting, but that only prevents um, priority moves from being used. And the only priority move I would have to worry about would be Fake Out, which I can easily manipulate. And, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't get Gardenia's personality at all. I really don't. Oh, right, yeah. The badges in the Sinnoh region do look a little bit smudged if you don't keep them polished regularly. I honestly don't care about that. But there we go. We've got our second gym badge, so now we have our new level cap. Pokemon that you receive in trades will obey up to level 30. So we will be able to use 
Alakazam. But the only problem is um, the third gym for us to tackle is not in the very next time that you move. Let me explain. This is where the difference lies for Pokemon Diamond Pearl Platinum. The next gym location is here in Hartholm City. That would be originally be the third gym you challenge if you were playing Pokemon Platinum. But because we're playing Diamond and Pearl slash William Diamond Shining Pearl, you have to run past Hartholm City, go up to Celestion Town, go through this route here to then get to Failstone City and then challenge the gym over there. The Failstone City gym is actually the third gym in this game. Or you could skip that, run down here, and go to Pastoria City and challenge that gym third. You can do these two gyms in any order you wish. But this one, you can't even challenge until later on. Stupid, I know. Right, once again, I'm going to run off and heal my Pokemon. And, because we've beaten our second gym, we are now able to get a new challenge. If we get the, you have to catch a Pokemon in the Grand Underground again, I'm going to re-roll it because we are not doing the same challenge two times in a row. But, the can't use healing items down there, that one actually has returned. So if it lands on that one, we have to follow that challenge again. What challenge do we get? I said we were going to re-roll if we landed on that one. Uh-oh. Okay, good. Okay, so our next challenge. If we run into a wild Pokemon, we can't kill them for experience. But this actually is where a problem would lie. Because you get experience even if you catch a Pokemon. So this is why I'm saying if you are catching a Pokemon, that's fine. But this is where I'm going to like put down a stand real fast. Um... Okay, I'm going to pause this so we don't have any music interrupting me. Um, we are not allowed to experience grind on wild Pokemon from catching Pokemon again and again and again of the same species. Which is why I said in the rules for episode 1, whatever Pokemon that you catch, you have to accept whatever nature the very first one you caught was. Which is why I released the Roselia. Because I wasn't actually going to be using that Roselia. I was just curious to see what nature it was. And have it as a backup in case the Badoo never got to evolve. Secondly, you can't experience Grind of Wild Pokemon just from knocking them out. So we are not allowed to ambush Wild Pokemon to deliberately kill them. And we are not allowed to catch Pokemon again and again and again if it is the same Pokemon. So like say, you run into a wild Bidoof. You catch a Bidoof and then you run into another one. If you find a second Bidoof, or basically, if you run into a Pokemon in the wild that you have already caught, you have to run away from it. You cannot experience Grind of it from either catching it or defeating it. So anyway... 
I'm going to be calling an end to this episode, guys. Next time, um, we're not actually done here in Eternal City. We've got more stuff here to do. And we're going to do that next time. See you guys then.